Today I got a video for you guys, uh, just talking my uh, whole experience in uh, Newark, uh, you know, Brick City, um, at the, you know, uh, Shakur Stevenson versus Yushodu fight. Um, as you can tell right now, uh, I'm tired as shit. I might not articulate too well, but I'm going to kind of give you the rundown of the story. I had a good time. It was fun. And I almost, I was there and I almost left and I didn't go to the fight. I'll bring that fucking story up too. So, uh, yeah, where do we start? Um, hmm. Alright, well, I just fucking start with the trip, I guess. Driving home right now, man, I am tired. You know, it's about 6,000 miles. Uh, about 6,200 6, miles with the driving. Uh, yeah, with the driving, it's about 6,250, 6, somewhere around there, who cares? But in the last, like, 48 hours. So I get the ticket. I'm not, I'm just winging it. And, you know, I usually have a plan, you know? A man needs to have a fucking plan. But I was just, like, to the point, when I got that ticket, I said, you know, if I'm going to train uh, Kakande and Isaac, uh, you know, two fighters I think are going to be at that level. Uh, when Kakande's here, I think he's going to be at, at Golden Boy. They're going to give him an opportunity whatnot. So I was just like, okay, I got to, you know, you want to take the island, you got to burn the fucking ships, right? So that's kind of what I've been doing in my life, just um, with a lot of career option stuff and life and moves and, and stuff like that. So this is just, you know, part of that uh, process. So I was like, you know what? I got to see if I can, A, if I like it still, B, if I could take the pressure, I got to look myself in the mirror and say, can you do it? Because I've always done not good there as a, as a coach. Like, people will be like, you train the whole camp with him, you don't even go to the fight with him. I, I've went to fights. I've cornered multiple guys in MMA and fucking... Um, boxing too, amateurs and pros, but like, you know, um, stuff happens in life and I guess just, I don't know, maybe social anxiety or something. So it, it is what it is. Um, but I was like, I got to do this. I, I got to do this. And, uh, this was the fucking card to do it on. This was the fucking card to do it on. Cause I was like, it was a nice looking card. Okay. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought that because that, that, they fucking packed the fucking house. So I get the ticket. I get there like 5:30 a.m. Uh, Saturday morning, and uh, I even got the. I go to Ticketmaster.com. Glad I did because there wasn't that many tickets left. So I got what fourth floor up, like off the floor, but uh, fourth row. So I got that perfect seats, man. I mean, I'm right in front of the ring. I'm loving life. Um. We'll get to that in a bit. And uh, so, yeah, I could do that. I book a hotel real quick right outside of the airport. And then um, to get the shuttle picks me up. Kind of have no clothes, so I have to rewash my fucking clothes because I, I was not prepared at all. I mean, everything was last second. I was up. Shit, by that time, I was probably, I don't even know how many hours I haven't slept. So I'm fucking so goddamn tired. And then I'm just like, you know, they got breakfast there. So I just load up. And then, like, I'm just going to work out. So I just, that's stupid. But I'm like, I work out. I was doing video content. Like, I was working out hard. Like, throwing up and shit. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Uh, so, do that. Uh, and I go to the front counter after I get done working out. I'm like, hey, um, how do I get down to Prudential Center? Because that's where it is, right? And they're like, okay, well, yeah, just take an Uber. It's like, why can't I take public transit? They're like, you don't want to get robbed. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? And these are nice people. Maybe it's because I'm white or something. I don't know why, why they said that. But I was just like, then I got it in my head, like, okay, now I'm definitely going down. And I'm going to be one with the people of New York. I swear to God, <laughs> that was winning my mind. I mean, and that's what I did. I went down there. Uh, I went down, mingled uh, with the people. Had a good time. It was fun, drinking, whatever. It was it was good. I, I liked the people, man. There, there was no I had no problems with anybody there. It, it was wild there. It's different, you know. It, it's it's good to do different shit like that. So I just went out there. I just kind of soaked up the environment. Got a little vodka. You know, I got a couple. Yeah, I did eat down there at a few places, and then yeah, I got some pizza. It's good pizza, but then I saw this homeless lady. I gave her a slice. Wish I had money. I would have gave her money. 
but what are you going to do? Um, but she was happy for that, so that's good. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, I kind of headed my way down to, to the fucking place. The uh, Prudential Center, right, where the Devils play hockey. And so, yeah, get there, 645, something like that. Um, and, yeah, so I almost didn't go to the fight, though. So here's the thing, I fucking get there. And now thinking about it is, I think, man, I might have dropped my fucking phone in the trash, man. Or someone got it, and they're on the come up. It is what it is. It's a nice phone. They could, you know, they could wipe it, and then they could sell it and, you know, get like an iPhone, Galaxy, good for them, you know. It is what it is. But at the time, right now, uh, granted, I'm freaking, it's 2 a.m., I'm still not home, got off a long flight, I couldn't find my car, because it was, the picture's on the phone, by the way, but they had, there's some word surveillance in there, they found it for me real quick, uh, that's a whole other story I'm not even talking about, but, uh, I get there, I lose my phone, the only lucky thing for me, or I probably would have left, is I had my sunglasses on at night, because that's a fucking jersey thing. That's that was fucking cool. No one, everybody had their sunglasses on. Guess what? Ever since then, through the airport, through everywhere, I'm keeping my fucking sunglasses on at night, inside. It's my new thing. That's a win. Okay. The phone, the phone was a, an L. Okay. You're gonna have wins and losses every day in life, and that was a big one because that was my main phone. This is just my backup. It had all my shit on it. So yeah, I sat there contemplating life, as in like. Why are you even doing this boxing shit? Well, what are you thinking? And then, you know, you do all that negative self-talk and you just can't get it out of your head. And, you know, you add the drinking and then working out and the sleep deprivation on it. Like, I'm having a fucking... I'm panicking. I mean, yes, a few tears. I, I had to go to the stall and just sit on the toilet for like like five minutes and just breathe, Mike. Keep it together. But then after that, I was okay. Not really. Not really till I actually, not till I kind of slept for two, three hours. Then I figured out how not a big deal it is. And it it is a big deal, but it's not. Because fortunately, granted I, I fucking don't have insurance on it. And granted I don't have any backup on it. But you know what? It could be worse. I could be homeless. It could be in war. You know, there, there's so many more real issues than that. But man, that, that one hit hard. And I was very close of going down those stairs and saying, peace out. I mean, I was fucking, it was a 50-50 shot, but then I was just like, all right, man, it's okay. You're here. Just, just go, just go. And then I went back in and it was, it was fine from there. Um, I mean, I was stressing, I was drinking, but it was fun. Uh, but yeah, now let's talk about the boxing. Okay. Um, the boxing, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy, and so is everybody, I think, in the crowd was entertained by that, for that whole night of boxing, for these fights. I mean, you know, you're giving people just time to not think about their fucking real lives, and, you know, it's just you give them money, you give them a product, they give you money, they also bring in money for, you know, uh, you know, the neighborhood. The sports economy is big. Think about it. I mean, you got the Ubers, the Lyfts, the restaurants, uh, the people selling shit on, on the street. I mean, they're making money. And that, that gets them on the, you know, that helps stimulate their economy. And then they can grow from there, you know. Um, and that's, you know, what Top Rank and Shakur Stevenson did last night, in, in my opinion. Because they, they loaded that fucking place up. And trust me, I spent some fucking money there. I spent some fucking money <laughs> till fucking two in the morning spent some money, and I took a fucking bus home, man, went to another bus, to a fucking shuttle, to a fucking, oh god, that was a mess, uh, but still, I, I don't regret anything, even losing my phone, so yeah, talk about the fights, alright, um, fighters that I liked would be, uh, you know, because like I said, my head wasn't in the game for a, a few fights there, it was fucking, where's your phone at, uh, Troy Isley, I, I liked him. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not 100% correct. But, you know, you can check him out, man. But uh, I'm going to definitely... Um, I'm definitely tuning in all his fights from here on out. There you go. 
So I'm, uh, I like him. He's, he's fundamentally sound. He moves well. He sticks to a de- game plan, and he doesn't budge from it. I liked everything he did. I like his focus. I, I liked it. I, I think the guy's uh, got a lot of uh, potential. He's got a high ceiling. I mean, all the guys I'm going to talk about have high ceilings. Uh, again, you know, I can't talk about every fight, but I'm going to talk about uh, four fighters from this card pretty much. So the next guy we're going to talk about is... Um, Keyshawn Davis, yeah, we'll go Keyshawn Davis. I watched his fight. I watched his fight uh, from the monitor upstairs, and then I watched his fight by the ring. And um, the kid's good. The thing is, like, he's been in this Bowmexus, I don't know, maybe a year or two. I'm not sure. But, you know, he's just going to keep getting better with this, uh, you know, if he's sticking to this game plan with, uh, you know, Bowmex. He's, you know, put a good program together. And I think. And here's the thing. It's not criticism. I'm not, like, talking any shit. It's not. He just, like, he's going to hit his prime, but it's just not yet. And I'm not saying he can't beat any guy in the world. I'm not saying he's not one of the best in the world. Of course he is. I'm just saying Shakur Stevenson hit his prime last night. That's what I'm saying. Do you see, do you see what, what I'm trying to say? A few more fights in. I mean, he could fight anybody now and beat him, 100%. I mean, Bo Max going for it, obviously. I think, he was, I think he was doing it last night. Of course he can. But I'm saying, like, from uh, for him getting, like, better when he hits his prime, it's probably going to be two to three years. Dude, but not because... Because I think it's just because of age and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, maybe, yeah, two to three fights, I think, you know, he's going to be like even 10 times better is what I'm trying to say and he's good already he's better than 99% of the world top percentile you know 1% got it but I think that um he's gonna he has a he has a huge ceiling you know all these guys I'm talking about have huge ceilings um but uh yeah I really was impressed what he did he's um he's getting better each fight bottom line you're either getting worse or you're getting better at anything in life. And uh, he's getting better every day, and it's showing up in his, uh, you know, fighting. You know, he looked fantastic. All right, so we got that uh, uh, fight, Keyshawn fight, good. He had a lot of fans, too, out for him there. I mean, the fucking house was, it was packed, man. The place was packed. They were going crazy there. Good environment. Um, who are we going to talk about that next? Davis? Okay, so, all right, or, yeah, no, big baby, Jesus Christ, yeah, I'm, I'm tired, guys, it's 208, I'm still driving, um, it's just on an eight-hour flight, uh, he is the best heavyweight, in my opinion, in the world, that's it, my opinion, I think he's the future of boxing for heavyweights. I've thought of, I've always thought of this though, but now since I saw him live in the pros, I don't think. I mean, nobody's unbeatable. I got that. Who the fuck's gonna beat this guy? Come on. I don't think anybody is. I think he's got the goods. I think he's a heavyweight we haven't seen before. And I know that's been said before about heavyweights coming up. But this is different, man. This is years of heavyweight boxing evolving to big baby. And, yeah, I think he'd be an all-time great, like, heavyweight, for sure. I think he'd have all four four belts. I know boxing politics, especially heavyweight boxing politics, doesn't work that way. But uh, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be him. Because uh, what I saw last night is a guy that, you know... Again, uh, like I'm saying, he's he hit his prime. He's leveling up. He's just adding an extra gear to everything. I'm just saying, I think Big Baby is the best heavyweight in boxing, possibly. Top three. Top three, man. That's my opinion, though. I could be fucking completely wrong, but from the eye test, what I saw last night, the guy knows how to keep his foot on the gas. If he can just keep his foot on the gas and keep doing what he's doing, he's going to be the man at the, in the heavyweight division. There's no doubt in my mind. All right, so got that fight. 
Um, damn, 14 minutes of talking. I just gotta stay the fuck up. I gotta be up in two hours when I get home. But, uh, it is what it is. It was worth every fucking... I won't change a goddamn thing. Even lose my phone, won't change a thing. Happy I gave Top Break my money. Not, not a big deal. Not happy I bought all those 20 goddamn dollar drinks. That adds up. I don't want to look at my fucking bank tomorrow. Jesus. Ah. Mike. Hey, at least I cut down my drinking, you know. I've got that way down, but... You know, when in Rome. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is. I will talk about, uh... Stevenson now. Let's talk about the main attraction. I mean, he brought him out, dude. Once that, like... That place got fuck yeah, man lit when his, when his music went on and he walked out there I mean I'm telling you man he's got a he's growing a fucking fan base quick I, I, I kind of knew it from the analytics too I always I always I'm kind of weird about that kind of shit um, like business and stuff and like analytics like uh, from your, for YouTube videos and views and likes and shit like you could tell you could tell he's got a fan base but I think it just doubled last night with that shit and uh, so yeah I think he hit his prime I think when you go back at it, when you look back in the history books, and, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong, probably am. People, I mean, maybe, you know, people in his camp, but as, like, just a, somebody from the outside looking in, I think he hit his uh, prime, you know, uh, on the 8th. I do, at the Prudential Center in uh, Brick City. I, I, I 100% do I think he put it all together, okay? And this happens. This happens in everybody's life. It's not just about boxing thing. I just think, and I could be wrong, because I don't know anything. I don't know anything about his fucking personal. I don't know shit. But what I'm saying is, you can tell, and I've seen this a hundred times, training guys in sports, and just training people in general, and you could tell and this is any job, when somebody is, they're not, they're not 100, okay? Because boxing for Shakur Stevenson is easy, 100%. It's just everything on the outside. And I'm not saying like, I, I what I'm saying is it happens in everybody's life. That's why I'm honest about my drinking, okay? It's better... Um, you know, I just, I, I like honesty. It's a, it's a good thing. And I just saw, I've watched some of his interviews, uh, before I went to the fight, you know, I watched the other guys interviews too, because I just was, you know, interested. And, uh, you, you could tell when someone's got it dialed in everywhere. And right now he's got it dialed in everywhere. So whatever, you know, he's learning from Prince, Crawford, Ward, you know, you know, his grandpa's in his corner, whatnot, him, you know, it is fucking working. Because uh, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the best performance Shakur have ever seen. I didn't think it was going to be that early. I thought he was going to get a knockout. But I didn't think it was going to be like that. He put his foot on the fucking gas and he did not let off. He did not let off that 135 pound Shakur. You know, that's the, that's, you know, he's, he's scary, man. It's scary. So I, I always said he was the best. That's kind of why I went to this fight. I was like, you know, fuck it. This is a good card. And everybody else that went to the fight, I mean, that's why it fucking sold out, like, pretty much. It was a packed fucking house because everybody was uh, interested in these guys. And this was a good card and good, you know, just overall good boxing. And Shakur just, he sealed the fucking deal at the end. He sent everybody home fucking happy. Happy and fucking crunk and a little drunk. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I just think he has everything dialed in. And if he could stay on this trajectory, he could 100% be an all-time great. 100% be a champion up to 47. I'm not saying, I don't think, 35, fuck it, give it 35 years, jump up to 40, jump up to 40. He could do whatever he wants if he stays doing what he's doing. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of happy about that because I called this shit. I called this shit in my videos. I like being fucking right. Three years later. You know, saying, oh, this kid's the fucking future. That kid's the future, you know. Uh, and, and that's it. So that's my uh, 
experience. Damn, 20 minute fucking video. Sorry guys. You made it through this. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, you know, top rank and uh, the, the, all the fighters for, uh, you know, giving a, uh, giving me a good experience. Uh, you know, come in there. Uh, just, you know, really putting on a great show. Um, and that's it. Besides my fucking phone, man. It, it was great, but I wouldn't change anything, any of it, even losing the goddamn phone. Everything happens for a reason. But uh, much love, guys, and uh, hope everybody has a good uh, week. I think I'll probably drop this on Monday morning. And, uh, yeah, back to the fucking real world. Ah, it's okay. Had a great weekend. All right, peace.